Hello, good afternoon. My name is Megan Thompson and I'm the Director of Education and Outreach for Cleveland Opera Theatre and I'm here with Opera 101. So we uh, started this series when we all went under quarantine and it's been a lot of fun because it uh, has been a chance for us on staff to kind of remember what are some of the beginner topics that um, folks might want to learn about, uh, especially explore, and especially for those of you with children and young ones in your life, uh, what are some topics about opera that we can tackle to make it a little bit more friendly for an art form. So last week, um, the last time I hosted, I talked about some of the things that you can expect when you go and attend an opera for the first time, because I think taking some of the mystery out always makes uh, anything more accessible, but especially something that uh, has so many stereotypes attached to it the way opera does. So last week we talked about some things to expect, but we did not talk about what opera should you go see for your first time? Um, and I think that's actually a really important thing to acknowledge. Not all opera is created equally. Um, even when you are a seasoned opera goer, there are certain uh, artists, certain productions, certain, you know, uh, just, just literature in the repertoire that's a little less friendly, a little less welcoming. So today I want to explore a few of my favorite beginner operas, uh, the ones that I always recommend for folks who are new to the art form, um, just because I think they're a little bit easier to get into, a little easier to follow, and most of them are on the shorter side. So, um, big thing is op opera, just like any other art form, is subjective. Uh, anybody you talk to will have their own opinions. So this is definitely meant to just be an overview and some suggestions. Um, and the other thing, and I mentioned this last week too, and I mention it all the time actually, Unlike other art forms, opera is the one medium where we actually believe spoilers enhance your experience. So no matter what opera you choose for your first time, I actually really encourage you to look up the plot, really understand what the story is before you go, because it will often help you appreciate what you're seeing on stage and be able to focus on the action. So most operas these days will have super titles above the stage. You don't have to worry about the translation. Um, you will usually have a synopsis right in your program, right in hand, so you can follow along, even if you forgot to look it up beforehand. So don't let any of those things be barriers to going. Now, one of the things that can actually be a really good segue if you're making your way into the operatic world is operetta. So operetta is a, an art form, kind of a cross between musicals and operas, where we've got some lighter topics. We've got almost always, um, for the ones that we see performed in the United States, they're almost always in English. They're very easy to follow generally. They're very comedic. So anything by Gilbert and Sullivan is a nice segue into this world. You've got like Pirates of Penzance or the Mikado. Uh, and then you've got some others that are very often performed in the literature, like the Merry Widow or the Student Prince. Uh, and then one that like really hovers on the line between operetta and opera is De Fledermaus. It really depends on who you talk to. I personally always put that one into the full on opera category, but there are a lot of folks who still consider that one an operetta. Um, De Fledermaus is actually a great starting point. It's a relatively short, um, it, very short really, and it's a very accessible storyline. We've got a party, we've got some mistaken identities, um, but all the music is fun and light and happy, pretty, and you'll even hear some that's familiar that you've heard in other settings, which always makes something a little bit more relatable, right, when you recognize it. So that's always helpful. Oh, I see John Simmons joined us. Hi, John. Welcome. John would probably actually have some great first opera suggestions for you. Um, and by the way, as a reminder, if you have any questions at any point, please feel free to pop them in the comment box and I'll try to address them as we go. Um, some other operas that I really enjoy to steer newcomers with, particularly newcomers with children. Um, Hansel and Gretel has to be like at the top of my list based on the classic fairy tales. So it's a very familiar storyline. You don't have to try too hard to know what's going on. And it's very short as far as opera goes. It's only a two hour opera. So this one was written in the Romantic Era by Humperdinck. Um, lots of fun characters. Most productions tend to do fun costumes and fun sets. It's just a, it's a good one, especially again, when you have your young viewers with you. And another one also like very fantastic and fairy tale like that's great for newer viewers is the magic flute. 
not quite as easy to follow along just because the story isn't as familiar, um, but it's it, it's very easy. You know, you've got a prince, he comes, he fights a serpent. We have uh, a lot of side characters, a lot of uh, supporting characters, like our three ladies who are working for the Queen of the Night. We've got our three spirits who are working on behalf of Sarastro, who is um, the counterpart. So it's very much a classic good and evil tale, finding your way in the world. Um, it takes the form of what we call the Singspiel, uh, which I think we've mentioned in previous Opera 101s, incorporates some spoken dialogue along with the singing. Um, so it's a little bit more on the musical end of operas just because it has those spoken broken up pieces, uh, but definitely a full-fledged opera. You know, Mozart was, um, you know, did a great job on this one. A classical era, so it's a little bit earlier than a lot of the others I'm going to mention today. Um, but it's just fun. It's family friendly. Most productions, again, are colorful. We've got a bird man in it, for goodness sake. So obviously it's going to have some fun to it. And again, when we have our young ones and our young opera viewers who are coming with us, it's a good one to keep them engaged. And some companies, including the Metropolitan Opera, will actually perform this uh, in an abbreviated point f version. The full version is roughly two and a half hours, but often it gets abridged. Um, we have Johnny Skiki as another one that I highly recommend for newer opera viewers. Again, it's funny. It's family friendly. It's uh, only an hour long. It's super short. And it's by one of our favorite operatic composers, Puccini. So it's a complete classic in the repertoire. Um, it's a farce, and it opens with the family mourning the passing of the patriarch. Uh, a lot of it's... Um, a little overdone, like very, very much crocodile tears in this. And then they realize that he left his whole fortune to a monastery. So everybody gets, you know, greedy and upset. And it just, it gets very convoluted. It's very much like a sitcom. Um, so, you know, it's, again, great entry level opera because you've got a very relatable plot. It's something we've all seen on TV and in movies. Uh, it's just sung instead of spoken. So it's a really great one to get into. Another one that's really easy for beginners and really relatable is La Traviata by Verdi. So this is another classic in the repertoire. It's very often performed, not just because it's beautiful, but because it's Verdi, but also because it's very easy to follow. Um, and I think that's one of the things that scares a lot of folks off from opera is that some of them are not easy to follow. Even when you know the plot in advance, you still get confused about what's going on. La Traviata is uh, not like this. It's very easy, simple. You know, boy meets girl, they fall in love, his dad doesn't like her, so he sends her away, and then the lovers end up reuniting. Eh, spoiler alert, ending might not be quite so happy, uh, but it's easy. So this one, I wouldn't say it's quite as family friendly. This one I'd probably rate like PG-13. Um, you've got, you know, a prostitute in the opera, which kind of automatically makes it a little less family friendly, but then just, you know, with some of the, the themes that are going on in the ending, I would just be caution, uh, uh, I would caution you if you have young viewers, just to make sure that, you know, it's, it's appropriate for your family. Um, and this is one, too, that you actually heard a lot, even if you don't realize it, because it's used very often in pop culture. There are numerous car commercials. Uh, there's one specific aria, actually, Sempre, li Sempre Libre, Sempre Libre. Don't quote me on that now. I'm blanking out of my Italian. Um, but it's been used in many car commercials and many other commercials and TV shows. And then the one a pop culture reference pretty much everybody recognizes La Traviata from is one of our favorite movies starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, Pretty Woman. So uh, definitely check that one out as a good beginner entryway opera. Another good one um, when you're just starting out and you're getting to love some new operas. Ooh, thanks, Ben. Yeah, Tabato is a good one to add for Skiki. And yeah, maybe not as family friendly as Skiki, but definitely a good one to add. Um, also, part of Il Tritico, uh, Skiki, Tabato, and Suar Angelica are actually all referred to as Il Tritico. Um, and now you usually only see two out of three. Um, but all three of them are nice short operas that are easier to get into. Um, 
My personal favorite opera, and another one that I think is great for beginners, is Carmen. So Carmen is written by Bizet. It's in French. I think it's actually the first French opera I've mentioned today. Um, but it's just, it's such a great storyline. We've got a strong female lead, which makes me a little biased. Um, as a mezzo myself, I'm a little biased having a mezzo in the leading role. But now we've got romance and violence, murder, deception, it's just, it's got a little bit of everything. And again, maybe not quite as family friendly, you know, use some discretion. It's probably about a PG-13 if we're putting a rating on it. Um, but we've got our small town boy. He works in, he's like in the army. He's doing his service. Um, everybody kind of becomes captivated by this gypsy woman, Carmen, who works in the cigarette factory. Uh We've got, she's a complete player. Like, she really can't be interested in anybody for more than, you know, a blink of an eye. Um, but something about Don Jose really grabs her. And so she becomes interested in him. Um, she ends up getting arrested at the beginning because she starts a fight. She then seduces Don Jose to let her go. It's this whole thing. Um, and then as we go through, she ends up finding somebody else because, again, she can't stick with one guy for too long. So we have Escamillo introduced. He's, you know, this bullfighter and he is very, you know, alluring and dashing. And uh, Don Jose gets jealous. You know, there's just this whole love triangle going on. And again, spoiler alert, ending, maybe not quite so happy. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of operas where the ending is maybe not the happiest. Uh, but it's such a fantastic story and you're so invested in the characters that it's definitely a good one. And again, it's on the shorter end of things. It's only about two and a half hours. So it's uh, a little bit more digestible and the action keeps things moving so much that you get lost in it. Um, and then there's also, again, we're looking at those votes for familiar music. I promise you that you have heard music from Carmen, whether you realize it or not, um, but particularly her habanera. You have heard it in commercials and movies, TV shows, cartoons. It's used all over the place. Um, so definitely another great one for, for our opera novices. And then in general, as I was trying to put together my list of some of my favorites that I suggest to you beginners, I realize Puccini comes up a lot for me. Um, I think his operas tend to be just, first off, I think everyone, no matter what your view is on opera, I think it's uh, as objective as you can get on a subjective subject, that he is a just beautiful composer. His music is beautiful. Um, and I think some of the other operas you should consider are actually by Puccini. La Boheme, again, very short, very easy to relate to. And if you have any musical background, uh, you've probably heard of or seen Rent, and it's the same story. Madame Butterfly, again, if you're a musical theater enthusiast, you've probably heard of or seen Miss Saigon. Well, Madame Butterfly is basically Miss Saigon, only the original version. Um, and then Tosca. Tosca is another one of my personal favorites, actually, because I think it's a little bit easier to stay engaged because the action keeps going. Uh, I mean, I think that's, you know, I think when I personally was getting into opera for the first time, some of the things that really turned me off were the fact that a lot of them tended to have a point where they just started dragging and it's like, okay, nothing's really happening. We just have people on stage singing. And it's like, yeah, you sound great, but let's get some action here. And I think that's one of the things Puccini does really well. Uh, Puccini and his librettists, I should really credit his librettists in that, is they keep the action moving. So it's beautiful music, but it's also just moving along. You never have a chance to really get bored with it because the story keeps continuing. Um, and then if you're a little braver, I would actually recommend looking at some of the 20th century repertoire because it's based on stories that are familiar. The reason I always hesitate to recommend 20th century repertoire is it's uh, it, within that subjective realm, um, it's not quite as objectively beautiful. There are definitely tastes when you start getting into your 20th century. So I love Adamo's Little Women, but I know a lot of people who do not. Um, and then vice versa. There are a lot of folks who really love uh, John Adams' Dixon in China, but that's not one of my personal favorites. So as you've kind of gotten your feet wet and you start dipping your toe into the opera pool, start breaking out and uh, checking out some of these newer operas. Just keep in mind that um, everything, all forms of media are subjective. And I always beg you never to give up after just one. If you've tried one opera and you're like, that's not really my thing, 
try something else that's from a very different era. So, um, you know, Mozart's from our classical era. We've got, you know, our Puccini's and Verdi's from the Romantic era. Uh, Handel would be a good Baroque composer. A lot of us tend to find that there's a specific era or style we, we really relate to a lot better. So don't give up after just one. And uh, in fact, this is something that maybe after all the social distancing is over, we can actually do. I've wanted to do an event that's basically like opera speed dating. So you have a chance to try to test out some different operas. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Because once all this social distancing is over, or who knows, maybe before it's over, I'm planning to do something with that. So you can kind of get tastes of different composers and operas that you might not have gravitated to on your own. So as always, Oh, John Simmons says Falstaff. Yeah, you know, I have to admit that's not one of my favorites, but that is a classic and it is another good one for beginners. So Falstaff, definitely take that recommendation. Thanks, John, for sending it. Um, definitely join us if you have questions, comments, suggestions for other good beginner operas. The comment box right here is a great place, or you're also welcome to email me. Uh, my email address is m. Thompson, M-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, at clevelandoperatheater.org. We would love to have your questions for future Opera 101 sessions so we can actually tackle things that are interesting to you. And if you haven't already, please visit our website and sign up for our mailing list so you can stay on top of all of our upcoming events. Our website is clevelandoperatheater.org. And we have all sorts of fun stuff coming up just this week alone, including a uh, chat tomorrow with a special guest during Opera 101. We've got Page to Stage on Wednesday evening at uh, 5 o'clock. We've got, oh, Maestro's Corner. Maestro has been doing Friday interviews with various uh, folks in the field, other composers, directors. Oh, Stacy loves the idea of opera speed dating. Thank you. Uh, we will do it. Stacy. I might have to ping you to help me plan it. Um, but we have all sorts of fun events. We're having a blast uh, here in our socially distant administrative side of things, um, planning these fun things to come up online. And that's another thing. If you have suggestions of content you'd like to see, send that our way as well, because, you know, we're, we love ideas. So thank you so much for joining me today. Join our mailing list, visit our website, keep in touch, and we'll see you later on or tomorrow. Bye, guys.